Hi guys! In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to summarize and analyze the anatomy of an animal. In this case, a rhino. But the process is valid for any animal you want to draw. Pay attention to all the steps and then try them out for different drawings later. So let's go! Okay, so I've got a layer with photos of three different animals. Each one of these animals has a different structure. However, these are standard for many species of animals. Basically, we need to know these three main structures if we want to learn to draw almost any kind of animal. As I said before, I'm sure you'll find different structures, but these are the generic ones. If you find others and you want to draw them, follow the steps that I'm going to show you, as they're applicable to anything. Lower the opacity of the photo so you can draw on top of them and see what you're doing properly. So let's move on to the three main structures. I'm going to use a saturated red brush. In this lesson, we're not drawing anything definitive, we're just making notes. Take notes on pencil and paper or with your preferred software and graphics tablet. See the directions I'm marking. All structures of this kind follow these directions. For birds, you tend to find this peanut shaped structure. And on the tiger, we see these other directions and shapes. I'm going to draw them on top of each one so you can see that only using these basic shapes, we get closer to the animal we're trying to represent. So you've seen how the rhino is taking shape with the three elements. The same now for the bird. And also the feline. So you'll find these three shapes in almost every animal. If you're taking notes on your computer, you should name the layers and organize them so you don't get lost. The following photos make reference to the first type of anatomy we saw, like the rhino. As you can see, you can find the same shape in many animals. In this case, I've chosen an elephant, a buffalo and a bull. But I'm sure you can find lots more if you research. I'll remind you of the directions we spoke about earlier. There were three, one going up, one straight, and the third down. See how the three follow this order, approximately, of course. Nature can be a little chaotic, but this is useful to get a general idea. Now, I'll draw the three main shapes we saw earlier on our rhino. The three animals, as you see, have a structure that's almost identical. Some are longer than others, but in essence it's the same. I'll draw it at the top here so you can see how the structure works on its own. So there's three parts that follow three directions. The head varies from one animal to another, but more or less they work in the same way.
the structure of the legs is the same. Some might be wider than others, but they all start at the same point and behave more or less in the same way. You can see this in the example I'm drawing here. Actually, my drawing could be any animal. Now we're going to do a more in-depth analysis of our rhino. Observe again how the directions work, just like we studied before. One upwards, one straight, and one down. The basic geometric shapes are the same ones we've been learning. And they work for our rhino. The legs have the same structure and they start at the same point. The same goes for the head and the neck. Although the shape of the head may vary a little, this doesn't mean that it doesn't behave the same way. See how the neck is like an articulated piece, like a doll. We can go up or down and we have a new position. Concerning the rhino's head, let's analyse the main parts. As you can see, it's a slightly curved rectangle. And stuck to its body is the neck structure. Inside the head are more complex substructures. We need to analyse these too. Let's put these shapes into blocks. So it's like we're subdividing the element more and more until we get all the details. Only you decide up to what point you want to study the structure. Let's see this summary on its own. If we follow the patterns we drew, see how quickly we get our rhino and we can understand it perfectly well. Anyone would be able to recognise these basic anatomical shapes as a rhino. So it works. And did you notice how quickly we're doing this? With very little studying of the animal, we now understand how to draw a simplified rhino. Well, you can apply all of that to anything you want to draw. See how the shapes pretty much appear themselves. I love this part of the study because it's where we really see that we've understood a large percentage of what we're doing. Now you can draw a rhino silhouette. Maybe it won't be perfect, but it will be comprehensible to anyone. You know the big shapes now, and that's an important step. Imagine being able to draw anything you want this way. With a good study process, there are no limits to what you want to represent. So now we've studied the main shapes of the rhino and other animals, let's go into detail on certain elements. We want to learn how to draw our animal in different styles, so we need to have a clear idea of how to do this. What we've done so far is a great way to draw a simplified drawing, but we can't really take it any further than that. 
I'm going to select the references and enlarge them so we can analyze them in further detail. And we'll start with the same steps as before. See that now we're going to add new shapes that exist but maybe we hadn't considered before. So it's about subdividing our shapes more and more. I'm going to highlight the essential areas a bit more so you see that everything is really working. If we only had the red line, we could still see a rhino at first glance. Maybe you think it's because we're tracing, but just wait until we follow these patterns on a blank canvas and you'll be surprised. See how we're getting all of the main elements. You always need to summarize with your eyes and know how to produce this with your hand. So as you can see, I'm separating each large volume into different blocks. I'm trying to keep generic shapes so the summary is clear. Although we might not use all the lines, it's good that your eye understands each block. If you want, you can subdivide even more, but this should be enough for a general anatomy study. Just keep practicing by finding the blocks that make up the shapes and try using other perspectives as well, so you really get a deeper understanding, like from the side or the back. Okay, we're going to do the same for the head. You need to know the head really well, as it's the most representative part of our animal. So let's start with the main rectangle that's slightly curved, and then we'll go with the neck and the torso. We could go on, but we're only focusing on the head for now. Observe the substructures that we have inside the face. The more you subdivide, the richer the anatomy will be. If you want to memorize these concepts, then draw the steps again and again as many times as you need. You might think that these blocks we're isolating don't make much practical sense, but it's very important that you understand how to get the summary of each line. If we just draw lines without considering what's underneath the skin, the lines probably won't make sense and the rhino may end up with bones where it shouldn't have any, or made up muscles. This mistake is very common in students who haven't learned these basic techniques. Actually, it's the most common mistake in beginners and self-taught artists. When I first started studying, I thought this step was boring, but in time I understood the importance of it and how useful it is. And my drawings quickly improved. So our study of the rhino is finished. You learn to draw the basic structure of an animal. Just by following these steps, you already have a lot of information in your head. So now drawing your rhino properly will be much easier.
especially if you accompany it with references for the smaller details. So in the next lesson, we're going to draw our rhino in a realistic style following the steps learned in this lesson. I hope you're enjoying the course so far, and I'll see you in the next lesson.